It's Valentine's Day, and we have Twin Day going on right now. We will also have a special Black History Month feature, and more coming up next on the Panther Morning News. Good morning, St. Mary's. I'm Tommy. And I'm Mark. And in Student Life News, tomorrow is the last day of our mini dress-up week for Valentine's Day. Come dressed in red and pink because on Wednesday we wear pink. Today during break we will have a pickup line contest at the cross and during lunch we will be ha having a free-legged race on the field. Hope to see you there. And Epicurean will be hosting a Valentine's Day cooking, cookie decorating party. Come make a Valentine's cookie for yourself or a friend. And Panthers, don't miss the winter music concert this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the auditorium, featuring performances by the, uh, music, by the music classes and jazz ensemble this trimester. Admissions are totally free. And an announcement for Enrichment Week, there will be a mandatory meeting for all Enrichment Week's groups this tomorrow, mm -hmm. Wednesday, <laughs> February 15th, at the beginning of A Block. This is the final meeting before Enrichment Week, so it's important for all students to meet with your teacher and get the itinerary for the week. And again, course rosters and meeting room assignments are posted in St. Joseph's Hallway. Students can see their course placements in the Enrichment Week or EW portal located in your PowerSchool account. And now let's head over to Studio B and Sid. As we learned at the Martin Luther King Jr. Assembly, by 1966, the Civil Rights Movement had been gaining momentum for more than a decade. However, for a large number of African Americans, particularly young black men and women, that strategy did not go far enough. Segregation, poverty, and powerlessness that generations of systemic discrimination and racism had imposed on so many black Americans was alive and well. Inspired by the principles of pride, autonomy, and self-determination expressed by Malcolm X, as well as liberation movements in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, the black power movement took hold in America. This movement believed that black Americans should focus on creating economic, social, and political power of their own. The following video highlights the beginnings of the movement. This morning's commentary comes from contributor Mark Whitaker, whose new history on the roots of the Black Power movement comes from our sister Paramount Global Company, Simon & Schuster. Don't be ashamed, we want Black Power. It began on a hot summer night in Mississippi with a cry from a young black activist named Stokely Carmichael. The birth of Black Power in 1966 also saw the spread of Afros, Daishikis, and the first celebration of Kwanzaa. Seen as radical then, its pioneers highlighted issues that are still very much with us today. To secure voting rights in Alabama, Carmichael pushed blacks to form their own political party with a striking Panther logo. Borrowing that symbol in California, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale created an armed patrol to monitor police. Yet for white Americans, black power rang of menace. In polls, whites suddenly opposed even nonviolent black protest by two to one. Rocks and racist taunts greeted Martin Luther King Jr. in Chicago. Infighting also plagued the movement. At a chaotic retreat, Carmichael ousted John Lewis, the future congressman, as leader of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, known as SNCC. SNCC militants pushed to expel all white members, leaving a trail of dried up fundraising. Asked to explain black power, Carmichael often provoked more than persuaded. In a primetime special, he spoke with Mike Wallace of CBS News. Mr. Carmichael, if you had the chance to stand up in front of the white community and say anything you desired, say to him, understand me, white man, what would you say? I would say, understand yourself, white man. You are the savages. Yes, it is you who have always been uncivilized. Civilize yourself. For today's Black Lives Matter movement, the tumultuous history of black power offers lessons and warnings about the importance of messaging, unity, and cross-racial alliances. Yet beyond politics, black power had a deep personal meaning. In 1966, veteran journalist Vern Smith 
was a student at San Francisco State University, where the push for black studies began. For him and his black friends, Vern says, it was almost like a born-again experience. We were no longer Negroes. And those African dashikis that remain a symbol of proud black identity? Well, Vern admits, we didn't even know what dashikis were before then. Thank you for watching. In honor of Black History Month, please join us Thursday at Mandatory Study Time to hear from a member of this movement here on campus. Back to announcements. Thank you, Sid. And now in club news, reminder that club photos for the yearbook are due. This week is the club's last week to submit their photos. Make sure you submit them to Georgia Rogers at grogers23 at SM Panthers by Friday. And listen, we know some of you out there took, uh, took up chess during the pandemic. Uh, we're very lucky to have two local grandmasters, Finn Montox and Mika Mazin, in Studio B with more on St. Mary's Chess Club. Hello, I'm Finn, and this is Mika, and we're here to announce the return of our school chess club. We've been at it for a while, with somewhere around four score and seven people every day in Mr. Sutman's room 415 playing chess. And we are here to invite them and everyone else in the school to participate in our first tournament since the pandemic. It is open to all skill levels and anyone who is willing to play. It is free to enter and will start on Wednesday the 15th and end a week later on the 22nd. It will be a pool play, so everyone will be guaranteed a few games. Signups are on the door of room 415, and we will email you more information and specifics those after once you have signed up. Play will be at lunch. Now back to announcements. Wow, oh, thank you. That, that, that was truly amazing. <laughs> I was, I'm glad. I hope, Tommy, are you going to do chess club? Maybe. Oh. Possibly. We'll see. We'll see. And we know some of you out there. Oh, wait, no. Here is Taryn with your Panther Athletics. Yesterday, we talked about the two big wins by the St. Mary's men and women's soccer teams over the weekend in capturing these two T Cal banners. The North Coast sections open play tomorrow. Let's take a look at the soccer seating. In part because of their upset win over Richmond, the men have earned the number four seed and will host at least one game in this 16-team in this bracket. The women have the number seven spot in their bracket and will also play at home. Over in girls basketball in Division Four, the Panthers also have the number seven seed and will host Jess and Siena, a sister LaSallean school out of Napa. We will have specific game times and ticket information tomorrow, or you can check out the links on the front page of the school website. This afternoon, we have the varsity baseball team down the street to take on Albany in a scrimmage. They have a 2.15 p.m. early dismissal. Now back to Jacob. Oh, Tommy and Mark. Well, thank you, Darren, and a very happy birthday today to Oliver Livin and Mr. Gonzalez. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to you. And here's a very special Valentine's menu for you, though actually it looks like a regular Tuesday menu to us. And students, at this time, please follow the link in your email to complete the course evaluation for your second period class. And that's it for today. Have a lovely day, St. Mary's. And sparkle on.